Welcome everyone, Happy New Year, and happy to be back. Uh, my break was okay, I guess. Um, I, uh, I, I got some rest, I did some landscaping like I planned. Um, I couldn't wait to get back because I had a lot of stuff planned for the new year, a lot of fun stuff planned. So a couple of announcements, really important announcements. There is a current community challenge. It is the crowd favorite, the ancient weapon design challenge. If you have not watched um, the design challenge critique hour from two years ago, three years ago, I guess, um, please go watch it. So 21 to 20, 22, 20, 29, yeah, three years ago. So wow, that's a long time ago. Um, so yeah, 21 to 20, 20 to 19, 19, 19. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, and we, there's just a ton, a ton of submissions from that, uh, from that challenge that we did. It's, it's based off a narrative that I put together that I wrote. Um, look at how many submissions we got. Look at like, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's like 50 submissions. No, it's like 60 submissions. Um, that's a lot of pieces that I had to go through. Um, so you guys need to, you know, really watch this to get some inspiration. So let me read through it. Um, so, uh, once you've downloaded your resource pack, which is right here, um, and it's just the brief and the little inspiration folder. I'm using the exact folder I gave you guys for this one. Um, so once you guys, uh, read through it. Look through the inspirational references folder to get an idea of what's expected and be sure to read through the brief. It's very important this time around, all submissions follow the rules. Um, so no more rule breakers. Any submission who submissions who do not post uh, the final piece with all preparation work on the due date will not be looked at. So a lot of you are posting way too early. A lot of you are posting challenge submissions way too late. Um, you guys need to post on the day that it's due and I'll submit the due date soon. Uh, there's no due date posted currently. Um, and you need to follow the rules or show your work, any research, any work that you put into developing your, your, um, your Yaretsi, that's the name of the, the champion, um, will be, uh, will, will be required. Have a watch of the critique hour we did back then when we last hosted the challenge. I just linked it here. Um, so excited to see all the submissions we got. Yeah. Um, as we did last time, this time we have rewards. So this one is going to be a pretty big contest slash, um, uh, community challenge. Uh, I will pick the final winner. So the final winner is judge's call. That's me. Uh, but the community poll will also be able to run um, uh, to pick the community favorite. Um, uh, so I will choose a polling website. I will link it to you guys so that you guys can choose who you feel is the real winner. The reason why I have to pick the winner um, is because the first place uh, seat is going to be critique hour. I mean, uh, free portfolio review critiques critique sessions with me. So um, I work with the student to create even more pieces. Um, we work on what issues they might be having. So the reason why I want to pick the winner is because I'm going to be looking for innovation, work, dedication, inventiveness, creativity, ingenuity, and imagination. That's the kind of challenge that we have today. It's a, it's, it's a challenge that invites a lot of that. You have to think of different ways to represent the bow. You have to think of different ways to represent the, fe the, the character. Uh, who is a female warrior, kind of like a half divine champion of some kind, or you know, se semi-human demigod um, creature uh, slash woman. Uh, so it's a really, really fun, uh, the, the you know, opportunity to challenge yourself when it comes to mechanically incorporating the bow into her, and then uniting the magic together and showing how the magic reflects the the, the, the character, and the character reflects the magical weapon. Um. So before, when we first hosted this challenge, it was on the, the, the Google Plus community, which went down for whatever reasons Google lied about. Um, and it was really cool because we could run polls on the Google community, which was so cool because we ran polls on what kind of weapon we were going to uh, feature in this challenge. So I, I chose a spear, a sword, um, a bow, and a hammer, and the bow won, um, which is so, so cool because you guys pretty much decided what the weapon was going to be. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we just went from there and then I chose the, the, the culture behind it, which was the Aztec culture. So make sure you guys are reading through. It's a really fun challenge. It's a character design. It doesn't have to have a background. If it does, it can be a minimal background. Um, 
and I really can't wait to see what you guys uh, make for me so I'm not feeling too hot today <clears throat> uh, and then um, uh, do I have any other things to mention right so if you're having fun with the community challenges are right here and want to keep, it, keep, uh, keep the community running like this and better for the future please consider joining as a patron um, so even if you just join as a dollar patron, it's appreciated. Um, if you want to join as a an apprentice, you get tons and tons of educational material. You get a community uh, on Discord, a private exclusive uh, for apprentices only Discord. It's very different from my public, also private Discord. Um, it's not the same Discord. I have two Discords, um, and uh, one of them is for patrons only. And uh, it it everything that you see here. So you've got the YouTube critique hour videos and the time lapse videos. You've got JPEGs, you've got PSDs, you've got homework uh, documents also submitted. Um, so you've got uh, any homework that you guys submit, any anything that you guys want to help critique each other with, all of that. You just keep pouring your work into the Discord community. Um, and then you've got my free brushes and any other resources that I offer. Uh, but if you don't want all the pressure of doing homework or being you know accountable for completing work, you can always just join in the lower tiers or, or the lowest tier, which is a watcher. And the reason why I call it a watcher is because if a lot of you who attend, like right now, there's um, quite a number of you right now listening. Um, and so you guys are watchers, you guys are followers, you do watch over the community. Um, so if you want to be a part of the like active support that is sent towards us, I really have a, I keep trying this goal every year and we never reach it, especially because of 2020. But the campaign is basically to get a thousand one dollar patrons. Um, one dollar patron is a sustainable amount over a number of years, and um, it kind of just helps to create a big umbrella of protection over the community. Um, I don't really work with marketing. I'm never gonna shrink my videos or make them ad friendly or anything like that. My classes are my classes are my classes. I'm never gonna make them something else. Um, you know, my classes are not also product constant product reviews and sponsorships and fake you know fake dedication to whatever big capitalist cog that you know that overshadows nearly all content on youtube nowadays but um if you want to be a part of the direct support i know um the patreon is a facilitator but it's a clean facilitator i guess um even if you just um join as a watcher you're you're you're, you're working towards developing a stronger more stable community and that's it for announcements. Portrait Studio is still on sale for those who are interested in buying it. I know a lot of you are still messaging me about when the sale will be over. It'll be on for, as I promised, two weeks after New Year's. Um, I might just t take it back up to partial sale price. I won't go back to full, full price because uh, we're still dealing with the financial restrictions of COVID. So I don't want to just, you know, I don't want to be that guy that sold, you know, or that, you know, the, the, the streamer that's selling their product for a hundred dollars during covid it's like really um out of touch and kind of um not really realizing what the world is going through so i might not um raise it back up to full price again this year and it might just stay at a relatively low price for everyone and my brushes as well um and then we have uh i think that's it oh i do have one more big announcement i've released all of my let me go to my channel real quick I've released all of my videos from 2019 and 2020. They don't show here yet. They're not here yet, but there's like 20 videos I released. They were all unlisted videos that, that were um, at one point uh, Patreon rewards or just forgotten videos. There's like 30 to 40 more videos that I have not yet released of critique hours from patron, um, you know, from the time where I was critiquing uh, ex those exclusive patron streams from three or four years ago. So I might upload those sometime in the coming year. Um, maybe I will leave them to days where I can't stream and I'll just upload a critique hour for you guys. Uh, but uh, but yeah, keep an eye out for those. I, I sent out a bunch of stuff, some, some stuff I'm not really proud of. Like I'm, I was pretty sick for a couple of these, but I still sent out a reward that month. Um, in, tw in 2019 um, so I still made a video out of it because it's like a, you know a mistake or a successful study is still um, is, is still something to learn from and so I, I share my thoughts um, on these as I uh, as I make them that's what the design journals are these came with PSDs for the patrons who won them uh, not one of them but received them 
um, and the brushes that I use for each painting. So if you do want to join as an apprentice, you'll get continuous content just like this, but it's going to stay exclusive for a year to a year and a half to two years before it's released to the public. So um, there's a lot of announcements, but it's the first of the year, like in the first session of the year, so it's going to be quite uh, packed. Um, any questions at all about anything I, I, I like the challenge or anything like that? Um, you're very welcome, Raphael. Um, I'm sorry, what did somebody ask? Uh, how is it kicking? How is it doing? It's the brack has been so long. <laughs> and then someone replied, she has a migraine. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so cute. Um, yeah, it was a little bit of a migraine. Marhaba, Sabra, Pumkin, um, Banati, what's your favorite and give me a like. Um, if you want to me a message on Instagram, I can answer you, but I can't answer you because I'm in session. Um, okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to take a look at this piece. It annoys me. Let me just say, it annoys me. Um, because uh, it's, I mean, it annoys me because of the genre. You know, I'm, I'm, I've never been quiet about the fact that I hate anime. <laughs> um, but I like to, you know, I like to just jump at it whenever I get an opportunity to because it's just so good. The tears are so sweet. I'm joking. Um, but uh, it's not really that. It's that I love the hybrid anime realism style. I love messing with it. I love kind of showing you guys the options you have and how even, even if you are an anime um, uh, enthusiast and you want to one day paint you can still bring in a lot of realism even if you're an anime you can still do a form study so what we want to do is uh, mess around with uh, like a, a kind of a tug of war between what still reads as, uh, as anime and what still reads as realistic and there's areas in anime just because it's anime doesn't mean that the volume of her thigh here collapses or this leg gets tucked in, in a different way style it, when it comes to bodies, is has to be realistic. Um, and then when it comes to features, has to be anime, in the imprint of anime, which is large eyes, small nose, small mouth. So hybrid anime style is the best style to do. I think it's more fun. I think it's more entertaining when you guys have, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a representation of your, like, your, your skill set and your form studies. You can create an edge on demand. You have a nice control of your of your contrast. You don't have to surrender to some kind of symbolic value use, which I've talked about before, meaning that, you know, just blending for blending's sake, no real measurement, no real thought process from the light source. Um, so we, we want to find an artist who is really, really great with their realism when it comes to the body and then in order to invest the anime hybrid, you're, you're simply just oversizing the eyes and rounding off the head. It's not a very complicated formula, as you can see. But that said, I'm going to run through everything I have a problem with, and then in the end you'll see how it all adds up. So, <clears throat> one thing about anime is that it corners, or like, you know, just gets a little bit too close to um, over-sexualized 12-year-old underaged girl. So I want to make a point that I am going to try to turn her into a woman, make her look less like a girl that hasn't even developed her breasts yet. So just jumping in there, just going to put that out there. Um, something about anime is it's just always rubbed me the wrong way that way. I, I never really... Uh, uh, found that to be cute or attractive. I know men are different, but uh, you know, as a woman who, who, who's drawn pinup before, I, I kind of know what's pretty and what's not as well. I don't need to be a guy um, to be able to know what you know what what's what's attractive. I, I'm a woman, so I always dress to be attractive, and it feels like it, it it's kind of really really bordering on that just underaged. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm just going to go ahead and give her breast size to reflect the puberty that we can see in her hip size because her hips seem like she is a woman, right? And it's not to say girls with small breasts look, uh, you know, under pubescent or something like that, um, prepubescent. It, 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 it's to say that the head size, so look at the head size, it's very, very small. The shoulder size is very lean. It's very childlike shoulder size and it doesn't really reflect what's happening. In the um, in the uh, in the body, 
in the hips. And I want to take a moment to say, I am not like, uh, any, at any point, someone who says, you know, I'm not racist, they instantly sound racist, but I'm, I'm seriously not trying to create any predisposition here in what I'm saying or, or set, a, set a stage for referring to any culture in specific. But it's mostly about the fashion culture of, 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 of K-pop. I don't understand that super infantile, cute voice, small body type um, obsession in, 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 in Asia. I don't, I don't see it. I don't get it. Um, and I think it does stem from anime. It stems from people who, uh, I guess, find that attractive in, in older women just because... It, it, I guess, you know, the more you age, the more obsessed you are with looking young. So I understand how it could be like that. When when it comes to characters that are designed with this deliberate under femininity or under like prepubescent form. And then the reason why I'm talking about all this is because of the hybrid. We're bringing realism into it. And then you render that prepubescent body with those large breasts or large hips or thick thighs with the, he with the anime head which is a large head, which makes it look like a toddler, right? Have you ever seen a toddler? Their heads are huge compared to their little tiny bodies wobbling around like a bunch of useless <laughs> idiots. Um, I love kids, and that's like that's where I guess it all comes from, is that I find it really, really weird when we're adding the anime hybrid to a prepubescent body on the top of the head, and then the more, you know, low you go in the body, the the... Uh, the more of a woman she is. So yes, you, it's like, uh, for lack of a better term, it's like, yes, this is a sexually mature female. You can go ahead and do whatever you want with it. And that's why I have a problem with it. So I'm sorry to be controversial, but I just don't get that K-pop young face, you know, um, child haircut with the with the fringe and the long hair. It looks like a five-year-old going to school or something, or, or like the school uniform. You know, it's just all, it's just all really gross to me. Um, so that's what first thing I'm going to do is cancel out some of the style that you have here. As I referenced earlier, I try not to cancel out style because I don't want to mute the artist. But when it comes to her head size, I'm just going to try to match it to her body. And it's, again, it's, it's just that it feels like she is a child with, with big hips and developed breasts. And you didn't even have developed breasts before, which is kind of why it bothered me even more. The head still feels circular, mostly because of the hairstyle, but I'll show you what I've done so far with the with the with the anatomy. So before, you can see how it kind of reads as a child, right? Those shoulders are really really narrow. After I tried to bring the neck size down, it's still not a lot of work, but it's mostly to do with one more thing that makes the head look super um, infantile or, or childlike. It's the length of the head. That's the kind of stuff that I say I hate anime because of. Because I've just, nobody's been able to answer the question, why are all the bodies so childlike? Why is the beauty so childlike? Why is the, you know, why are the bodies underdeveloped with super sexy lingerie on? And why are the bodies overdeveloped with childlike clothes on? You see what I'm saying? Um, sometimes it's a super developed body with, 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 with a with a schoolgirl costume and then sometimes it's an underdeveloped body with lingerie it, it it's it just seems like anime has no chill in that department it seems like they're always doing something to fucking piss me off um and that's why most animes i can't watch them because they really over sexualize the the underage female body not just the female and then there's just the whole concept of you know all the girls in anime have to be of a certain size, of a certain shape, of a certain, you know what I'm saying? So it's really objectifying. Um, and I'm not the type of girl that constantly yells, oh, feminism, feminism. But when it comes to anime, I feel like there needs to be some borders set and, and lines in the sand drawn. All right, so I'm going to try to get the face to feel a little bit more realistic. What a, what a lecture to start off the new year with, right? Some justice. <laughs> some 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 of that stuff it's a good question to ask it's a valid point of you know debate it's a good place to start a debate um and i'd love you know to ever have this debate with some intensely dedicated 
anime enthusiasts. I've had debates like this with these people, um, and it's almost, unusually enough, almost always guys. There's a reason why these 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 girls are these streamers are dressing up like this it's that lolita thing and then just to clarify lolita was written by a book it was written as a book written by um oh, i forgot his name um but it's about a man who was obsessed sexually with an underage girl so lolita itself the term comes from a book about pedophilia uh so be careful you know, get yourself, you know, a little bit more aware of, you know, where some of these aesthetic, um, what the aesthetic origins are. Um, what's his name? Um, I forgot his name. You can see why I deliberately kind of just like closed off that part of my English lit training just because I just, I just repressed ever reading that book. Um, Nabokov. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to add a little shadow here on the mouse just because I can't tell where the form is. So it's hard to liquefy it if I can't see it. All right. So that's what we're drawing here is Lolita. And that's why I'm careful with with uh, with ever picking pieces like these for critique hour because I'm just like I'm just adding to this to the cause. But um, or to the issue, to the problem. But I wanted to at least discuss it one of these days just so that we could. I could teach you guys how to make it cute and keep it a woman, um, keep it looking like at least an, a girl of age. So one of the things I did was I got rid of the, 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 the baby cheeks. You know, when you, you know, mature and you start growing your cheekbones in. So I'm giving her some cheeks and you can see, I'm going to exaggerate it. It's like this, it's this kind of motion and liquefy. All right. So I just gave her some cheeks. And that is, that's going to make her look a lot more mature. All right, and she's got a, a fringe, so she's got like bangs. I'm going to move her eyes up a little bit more and just lengthen her face that much more. Just so, we, and you'll see the before. And I understand that the artist obviously is not trying to paint an underage girl. It's anime. It's, it's a hazard of attempting that style. It's a hazard of the style. Um... And then because you're you're kind of half in half out with your with your like the hybrid anime realism, I'm gonna just thicken the nose a little bit. Just give the nose a little bit more width. It's always weird when we have a nose that's too thin for a face. Okay. And then again, let's take a look at the before. Before, do you see what I'm saying? So this is the example of underage body in lingerie. All right, so I want I wanted to take a day to talk about this. I wanted one of these days to finally get on the cross it off my list is the day I finally rant about pedophilia in anime aesthetic. Um, and now I'm not saying the artist is a, obviously I'm not saying I'm not even going to mention it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not saying anime is a world of pedophilia. I'm not saying I'm saying it has very uh, a, a very weird obsession with the Lolita, and I want to say that the Lolita actually comes from underage girls dressed up in, uh, you know, the whole aesthetic itself is dressed up in lingerie, lace and long socks and short skirts and and frilly skirts, so it looks like a doll. I I don't know. I've never liked it, and I want people to start talking about it, and I want it to get out there. I want it to be a discussion. I want people to mention it. I don't want it to be so acceptable anymore right so before oversized head small shoulders basically toddler silhouette with with the with that so you you can still have the same you know feeling she can still be a very very cute 18 and older um just by adding the cheekbones and lengthening the size of the head all right um, and it, I, 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 I honestly just don't feel like we lost any beauty. I feel like we added to it. <clears throat> um, he was a genius, unfortunately dead now, but I really recommend his stuff. One of his movies, Perfect Blue, even talked about that creepy idol culture in a very mature way. Yeah. It's not acceptable and people keep pushing the boundaries. As long as we're not talking about it, the boundaries will be pushed and I feel like we need to start talking about it. So let's go on to uh, so, you know, a topic outside of this, just other stuff that I want critique. 
Um, the stomach, for some reason, her belly button is like a fissure. It's like it's not even a muscle indent anymore or, or, or the ab indentation, you know, because you don't want fully developed abs on a generally soft female, um, but you still want a belly button. Her belly button is, 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 a, is, is a crater. So I'm just going to shrink it. And just um, try to show that it's not as much a, a cavity as it seems. It kind of seems like a hole or some kind of scar. All right, and then we've got um, the breast bone, which is it really to make the space in between the breasts without drawing cleavage realistic you just get a highlighter and you just literally draw a line in between the boobs that's it and then you just show how though the breasts aren't large there's still a change in the surface area shape and underneath and that'll help you guys do something in this area instead of leave it awkwardly blank and again I want to stress that the artist who drew this is, is not being accused of any of that stuff that I mentioned of course not now that's nowhere nowhere near what I mentioned it's that they were trying a style and they, you know, they, they were just for all intents and purposes trying anime and that's what happens. That's what anime do, does. That's, that's what, ha what, that's what happens when you try anime is that the work ends up looking dangerously close to underage girls in, in lingerie. And I'm not going to be a teacher, you know, as, as I am a, a public figure who teaches online without mentioning that there is a, you know, a little level of pedophilia here that we need to be aware of, but it's not to blame I blame Japan. <laughs> I don't blame the poor artists who did this. All right, so the thighs, what happens with the thighs is that it really doesn't feel like this leg is so behind that this part of the skirt collapsed. It feels like this part of the skirt could be a little bit more, uh, how do I even pull this off? Uh, could be a little bit more, um, kind of sitting on top the Z axis a little bit you know, just tucked upward. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do that. So instead of it collapsed, it's kind of just tucked up along with the rest of the body. And I'm going to try to Correct this part here and paint in that area. So what do you guys think of this? What is this? When was the last time somebody actually discussed this problem? Um, please do comment and, and make your thoughts known. If you agree, if you disagree, I'm most likely um, going to get a lot of disagreements about this. I don't think it's this. I don't, honestly don't think it's pedophilia. It's just, you know, about the cute. But you really, I mean, I'm, I want to see what people have as a refute for, for the fact that we're talking about toddler features and the toddler silhouette and anime, because that's what bothers me, um, is that large head thing in the blob, you know, that, that, that bobble head of a child. That's the part that <clears throat> kind of a lot of people have a hard time disagreeing with. Uh, because it's just so obviously childlike, infantile. Um, I know I just disconnected. I'm sorry. I hope it doesn't keep happening. I skipped a, an OBS update because it wasn't wasn't working. I hope that that's all we're getting for disconnects. Um, it's the dehumanizing argument, which is a slippery slope to rationalizing bad situations. It sure isn't. Crazy what some people can render, right? Um... The artist uh, goes underground now. No, no. Um, so you can see what I meant with the skirt. Uh, let me see if I can find it. So before, after, so it kind of just gets tucked up with the rest of the skirt. And then for actually this part of the skirt, I would move it up. Okay, and then we've got, let me just correct, I just did, I'm 
was looking at the navigator. That seems acceptable for now. And then I'll just use my smudge brush. Alright. And so this thigh just seems to be going in a direction that, you know, we can't trace. Feels like this thigh is this, um, needs to be cut off. And I'm just kind of cutting it off over here. And then for the hair, I'm going to just try to at least fix this unusual bump you've got. So it seems more like a bob um, cut, which is a little bit more of an older girl's cut than, than the long kind of messy kid cut. <clears throat> um, but let's see what else we can do with the with the face. So because we gave her cheekbones here, we could probably give her some cheekbones up here too. Um, and cheekbones are beautiful. Cheekbones are sexy. Cheekbones are also, you know, a part of why a female looks beautiful. And that's the circular face, that chubby face, is you know we we don't use that for when we're trying to draw Aphrodite, you know, or or um. Or a love interest. We usually give them really strong model, supermodel cheekbones. Not the super, super strong cheekbones. Um, so if you've ever seen Atlantis, um, the Helga lady, the blonde superstar ass kicker lady. Um, she, I wouldn't say we want her to look like that. I wouldn't say we want her to look like a super, you know, strong um, military female. Um, uh, you know, has, has a lot of uh, physical strength to her and then beauty follows so the strength comes first in the part in, in the in the formula and then we have beauty here we have beauty first and then strength kind of just doesn't really exist there and so that's why we're prioritizing the curve over the strong angular cheekbone which we would see in a stronger female and by stronger I just mean physical you know ass kicker gun wielding without looking like a dolly. So cheekbones go a long way. And that's that and then, then, then there's the argument that we have um, uh, sketches versus realism. So when you start rendering stuff to make it look realistic, it starts to get a little bit more in that realm of why the hell is this child baby wearing lingerie versus a sketch, which you can get away with because for time immemorial we've sketched females that look very toddler-esque, but we get away with it because it's a cartoon, right? Cartoons are a little bit more different because they are not taken seriously as a, as a realism or representing realism um, uh, fundamentals and what can be. When you're painting realistically, it's what can be. That's what you're saying. This can be real. And we don't want to show that a toddler can wear, ew, I can't even like say it without wanting to puke in my own mouth. Um, so I'm going to do one more resize because I want to show you how large the head is and I'm going to do that trick we used to do and I'm just going to just cover up the head and we're just going to chat for a little while and then I'll unveil the head and you can see how your mind is finishing this drawing right now with a certain head size um, and then when I re re reveal the old head size you'll see why it was just even after my edit was too big and then in the before you'll go ahead and see the real before and after and that's why at the start of this critique hour I was like anime pisses me off because um it, it's it's got that thing in it that pisses me off, and I, I can't ever enjoy it because it just feels wrong enjoying anime you know what I'm saying um so Hamish says congrats on the 100k subscribers what a wonderful achievement Thank you, Hamish. I got verified. Did you guys see? There's a check mark beside my name. Um. So yeah, I'm a verified bitch now. <laughs> Thank you. Um. It's 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 not a million. <laughs> I mean, I wish I could have hit a million, but that'd be crazy. Imagine the Reddit community if I had a million followers. I think our size is actually, you know, what God and the universe intended for me. It's very manageable. I can still ring out 
two sessions a, a month, uh, two sessions a week, actually. Damn, I do a lot of work. Um, and uh, and it's, it's a very easy um, to manage number where it's still very rewarding at the same time. This whole 20 year old trend, like 14 year old is such a weird trend, I know. The artist might have wanted to render a style trying to be faithful to proportions of the original idea. I think it was mostly an unconscious thing. It's good that this is getting better. Um, absolutely, I mentioned that like a, the four times already. It's not the artist's fault. He was using a style. He or she was using a style. And the style is what comes with it. So I, I think we should scrutinize the style, ask questions of anime um, and, and K-pop and all of those people who abuse and reuse the little girl with little girl haircut and little girl pigtails. And, and little girl school outfit while dancing sexy and wearing like long leggings or, or lingerie um, socks or, you know, it, 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 thigh high socks and stuff like that. We need to ask the people who are doing this the question. This needs no longer needs to be nice to look at. We need to be like, ew, no thanks. If you're going to have a sexy lady, just draw a sexy lady, have a sexy lady, use proper proportions. So that we can separate a really strong line, not a gray area, not a thin line, a very, very wide line between drawing children and drawing females that are older, post-pubescent, post -pubescent of age, you know, because you're still, you can go through puberty, but you can still be a kid, so. Yeah, the faces were incredibly uncanny, but production was very good. Um, so, you can see the before, it was pretty big. Um, and then the before, before. Is actually pretty big as well so this is after I resized it and I'm gonna resize it one more time and I it could be the haircut because just take a look um, the bald head um, seems okay it could just be the haircut but then again the hair is pretty high in the volume here so I'll try to shrink the head with just the hair um, and then if I can't do that I'll um, I'll, I'll shrink the whole scale. So it's, it's a scale change, but hopefully that little bit left over that's lingering can be just fixed by moving in the head, the hair closer to the hairline. I mean, the hairline closer to the head outline. It's, she doesn't have that much hair. And it's not an 80s or, or 90s poof, you know? You know when they used to do short hair, but it was poofy. It's 90s fashion. Heart crash. Brown lipstick was a big deal in the 90s, too. Like, what was that about? <laughs> um, and I'm just going to strengthen her jaw a little bit as well. And then give her more strength to her chin so it shows like a more developed female head. And then. Um, I think that's good for now. I might lengthen her body just so that we can show how it's a longer, taller female so she feels less short. And then um, <clears throat> do one general shrinking of the upper body. So it's just it's a really tricky little shrinking here. And then an oversizing of the, of the size here. See, so, so now she feels any bigger and she'll kind of feel like a heftier girl. She'll kind of look like me. <laughs> I'm pretty hefty. I have a very big butt. Um, but, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's not necessarily every single pinup needs to be exactly like that body type. So you don't have to be super curvy to have females, is what I'm saying. I'm just trying to make it so that all those girls out there who are not, you know, who are not curvy don't feel like I'm saying you're not beautiful. <clears throat> We're all beautiful, right? So before, see how I shrunk the top half and the lower half? Still very beautiful, right? And then are you guys for the ready for the before? <clears throat> losing my voice. Uh, for the knee, which has bothered me, I can see what you were trying to do and it's cute. Why didn't you just uh, hide the leg behind the other leg? So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to steal it, and I'm going to flip horizontal and use it on this one. Do I even want to flip it horizontally? Um, actually, it's fine like that. What am I doing? All right, and then there we go. And then the other leg could have just been tucked behind. And stay behind. 
obviously not this long. It can't stay this long, but you, you kind of brought it in front, but tucked it behind. Um, you could have just put, you kept one of the legs in front of it. All right. Any questions at all? Is her dress not too dark for the straight strength uh, that the light her skin is reflecting seems to be? Um, it's not too dark, it just doesn't have the universal light that is in the room. So I'm just going to tuck this leg upward. So basically, all we need to do is just get a pure white, that's it. Oh man, I thought Photoshop crashed for a second. Um, let me just flatten the save. Alright, um, so we're just getting a pure white and we're using it on everything. So we're starting with everywhere where we already have light and we're just following up. And I'll show you the before and after. Obviously the wings are in, a wrong, in the wrong spot. They also don't feel very uh, wing-like. They feel like Batman cutouts. So see how the light of the thigh is moving up? That's going to do the same thing on the dress. You're just following the, the object that the clothes sit on. Alright, that's it. There's no secret color. There's no magical color that you have to have to make something united with its environment. You just have to use the white of the light. So that is it. That is it. As long as you use it everywhere, it'll look right. And then anywhere that is in shadow, I'm just going to throw in some extra. It seems like you cell shaded too. And then I'm just going to throw one big brush stroke on the top of the legs that look at the light. So there's like a it's like an L shape, basic form study stuff. And then this leg here should not be in light anymore since we tucked it behind. And then we'll look at a complete before and after. Um, I feel like the background value could be a bit brighter, but um, it's, it's up to you. The other uh, wing shouldn't be there. It kind of just feels like you didn't know where else to put it instead of it just being there deliberately. Why not just make it a symmetrical thing since it's going to be a pinup anyway? Oops. I guess I'm not there. <coughs> Just right there should be fine. Nothing too fancy. So it's doing that, and then it's like bloop, bloop, and that's it. All right, and then I'll just fix what the heck I did here. I don't know why that was so hard. Ah! Okay. All right. And then merge that down and then complete critique. So, again, I repeat we're not blaming the artist, we're just blaming anime. We're blaming Japan. <laughs> All right, so I don't know why I do so many select panels. So before, after. All right, so look closely at the changes we did, how we still kept her sexy and beautiful. Not that she was sexy before, God forbid. Um, all right. So we need to have a nice mature discussion about, you know, what it is that people do um, that ends up making their work look like this. And that's lack of anatomy knowledge. Right now, just look up a picture of what a toddler looks like. It's very thin shoulders, very small head, very big head compared to the body. Do not do that anymore with characters with whom you, like that you're using to represent sexuality, period. All right? That's gross. And don't dress them up in lingerie, please. Thanks. It's illegal. Um, <laughs> 
please be legal with your character designs. I'm joking. I'm not trying to attack the artist. Again, I have to keep saying that in case that thought comes, is summoned in between all my sentences. Um, because it's, it's not fair to them. They're just following a style. But I just wanted to choose a day to tackle this, to tackle anime as a whole, tackle anybody who supports that kind of aesthetic or dresses up like that. Um, I just think it's nasty when a fully grown woman with full hips and curves and baby bearing body dresses up in like tutus that are that are that look like this and she's like she's got like a little hat on and and it's just like full on boobs everywhere i just i've never thought that was tasteful i've always thought it was as trashy i've always thought it wasn't really that pretty it's it's not to say you know we can't even say that it's something historical because back then dresses were long so if you want to talk about like victorian or elizabethan or something like that the dresses were long and big this is just it's just got one purpose to copy what we what we dress dolls in and just put it on a female but dolls are used by kids so why are we doing that right it just messes with my brain and i just don't like it so I've never liked anything that, that, but this isn't necessarily that. This isn't necessarily, this is obviously lingerie. So now we've uh, attached that lingerie to a, to a body of age. Right. And the face, just look at the face, how I lengthened it, but her eyes are still, if you met a girl like this, she'd, she'd be gorgeous, right? She'd still be gorgeous. She just has cheekbones now. It's not that really short, chibi kind of face anymore. <clears throat> Any questions? Um, yeah, it is uncomfortable and very weird. Yeah, oh, I, somebody's got to bring it up. If you disagree, please uh, let me know why. Um, and I know it's a very difficult topic to discuss without sounding like someone who's supporting this. And I know even if you were arguing back, it'd be hard for you to lay out your idea without being attacked. But, but you know, I'd try anyway. I'd love to hear what you think is, um, you know, because I know it's evolved over history. I know it's no longer the Lolita that we know from the Nabokov um, uh, book, but it it's... They haven't bothered changing the name, and everybody's wearing pigtails and doll clothes. So yeah, I, I, yeah, it's just it's hard to argue against why that's icky. Um, for this piece, which is also anime, um, it, it, it's just uh, <clears throat> it, it's like let's talk about the the basic structure of a sphere. So when we have a sphere, it's a, you're, you're going for the hybrid, right? You're going for the hybrid. Like look what you did with the hair. So when we're talking about a sphere in light, the shadows start as soon as the depression of the highest point of the of the sphere happens. So that as soon as that starts moving downward, as soon as it slides down, turns away, whatever you want to say, um, that's when the shadows start. So from this point here to this point here, from this point here to this point here, you're having pretty average values that are they're very similar to each other. If we did the same thing here, from this point here to here, and from this point here to here, we'd have a drastic gradient here, all right? And we'd have a minor gradient here, all right? So if we're not seeing that, we do kind of have something here. Um, if we're not seeing enough of that, you no longer have a face full of volume. So what I want to show you is just that's all you're missing to make your piece look more realistic is that you, you're just, you don't have core shadows. That's really the, the easy way of of saying it and I'm just radially dropping here I'm not really worried about using the wrong value because I'm on a separate layer and I'll just clean it up after and then I added too much because I was going to erase radially all right so before after and then it's that kind of strong neck shadow and then the next shape the neck has no reason to be this bright anyway so there's there's no problem with lowering that neck shadow but raising the brightness of the shadow this stupid fucking table keeps creaking all right so there is a bit of a relief that you need for the bounce light on the chin, which should help. God 
Damn it, I can't even lean my elbow on my table. And then in a new layer, I'm gonna just clean up that patch of shadow you've got there. Alright, so just because it's anime doesn't mean we can't follow some of the more basic rules of core shadows, the basic rules of light on form, edge control, radial shading. Anime does not is not a license to make mistakes. Anime hybrid is not a license to make mistakes. In fact, if you start missing it, write that back to me. Um, it's it, In fact, you're, you're even more under scrutiny if you make a fundamental mistake drawing anime. And then the jaw just seemed like it didn't exist. Seems like they just got cropped off. And good job on showing volume on the mouth. Um, but it seems like you're not showing all of it. You're not showing the rest of the cylinder. Kind of just uh, flatten the cylinder towards the outside. You need that spherical outer C shape for it to look like a cylindrical, realistic mouth. And something that you guys do a lot, um, and you can tell this artist here has been focusing on style too long, because if you had done form studies and nose studies, you wouldn't be making the simple mistake of keeping the outline of the nostril. Get rid of it. You no longer need it. This little outline on the nostril here, it needs to go. Oh, but it's the back. I have nothing left after that. That's your fault. Um, that's not your drawing's fault. Um, you need to go figure out how to fill this up with more form, and in fact, you probably didn't even need it. It was fine as it is. You just need to raise the edge of the end of the nostril. All right. So that extra outline you guys throw in, it's just so icky. It doesn't look... It's not helping in any way. It's, you're just keeping a line around for no reason. And it just flattens. It makes it look like the nose is like flared out or outlined or someone got some eyeliner and just eyelined like the, the visible part of the nostril wing. Just get rid of it. You don't need it. All right, so some really basic changes, but I hope they, in the long run, they kind of show you. <clears throat> That the basic comes from extensive studies of uh, basic doesn't mean simple and simple doesn't mean basic. It's um, it, it it's, it's not time wasted to do a form study once in a while. I'm gonna just throw in some stronger cast shadows more distant from the hair that they come from because it feels like the hair is kind of plastered on or stuck on. Just give us some stronger, you made the, the point of throwing hair on the face, just have some stronger shadows. If you're too scared to do cast shadows, you wouldn't be if you did form studies. You get to practice them. All right, and then we throw a stronger shadow off the nose onto the rest of the face behind. Son of a bitch. And I can't tell if this is a male or a female, as is with anime. Um, another kind of thing I don't get about anime. So they're tr they're fully going for like a heterosexual relationship, but both look like super female, you know, super beautiful females. Um, it kind of just feels like the entire heterosexual has been disenfranchised by anime. You know, like the, the relationship of like a woman looking for a strong male Woman looking for strong male in my area. <laughs> it just feels like it's no longer a thing in anime. And that's okay, I guess. For each his own. But I used to have a big, and I used to watch Bleach, and I used to have the biggest crush on, what's his name? The guy who has a, he's like this, he's really scary. He's one of the demi, demigods or death gods. And he's got like these scratches on his face and he just looks so fucked up. <laughs> I never had a crush on the girly looking guys. It was always those really messed up like Vegeta characters who I just I loved. What's his name? No. Um, 
It was the guy with the really spiky long black hair. No, no. And he had like a little assistant girl on his shoulder or something. But she's like scarier and bigger than him as a demigod. I forget. Bleach was a good time. Watching all those power-ups for, what's his name? It's really great too. Before, see how flat everything looks? After, just a little bit of shadow goes a long way. And if you didn't know where to put shadow, I just showed you. It was a sphere and that's how you track it. And there's more you can do. There's even more you can do. I'm gonna cool down the shadow color and I'm just gonna start radially stacking. Just so that we could shadow up that inner part. Even the hair is gonna get under that shadow. Just a little bit of shadow. See that? Just on the eyebrow hair. Look, look, focus you guys. See that? It adds that same, like that strong character. And then that mystery or blank face, whatever. Everybody's mysterious in anime. Everybody gets a mysterious back backstory. Everyone's <laughs> I would love to see an anime that satirizes like that 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 just makes fun of everything that is anime. Uh, not no, not cameos, because I know about those. I'm talking about an anime that mocks anime. That's an anime I would watch. Mmm. I think it was Kenpachi. Or is it Zaraki? Maybe. Oh man, he was so hot and angry. <laughs> um, all anime characters are lab grown for maximum mystery. <laughs> yes. Um, and then we have some shadows here, which are also part of the sphere. Oopsie. Wrong valley. Again, cooling down and darkening. Um, look up Gintama. It makes fun of out of shonen and a bunch of other stuff in anime. I would, I would watch that, yeah. And then um, just start darkening things that are just not getting any light. Don't be scared to just throw them in some shadow. Not everything has to glow with the fire of a thousand suns of protagonist, all right? Sometimes things can just be dim. And because they're dim, they, they make more of a statement when we don't, when we do undim them and show. So he looks expensive, right? So we're gonna get more of that expensive look if we limit how much shine goes everywhere. So that it really shines when it's hit. There was a time in my life when I was starting Critique Hour and everyone and their mother and their little mother came to me with their original character. <laughs> I grew such a resentment to everyone in their original character. Don't even, do oh my God, don't even, even now, still, even now, don't talk to me about your original character because it's not to say you don't have original thoughts or nothing, but I just want to say that nothing about your character is original. <laughs> All right, and I'm sorry, and that's the truth, and it hurts, and it's the truth, and um, anime and everyone's original character with orange eyes and one green, one blue, and you know how it is. Um, it's, it's been done before, and, and though it might be unique to you for someone who's just constantly critiquing people's original characters and people's narratives and designs, it got old fast. So that's a big reason why I'm so, I scrutinize myself so much because when I do original characters, I try to make them as unoriginal as possible in that they become original. Everyone has a character with the long braid and the 1700 braids and the, and the seven belts on their final fantasy leg. Um, and it's just not appealing to me anymore at all. I like the basic character. If she's a jungle girl running around killing animals, she's going to look pretty fucked up. She's not going to have a wide wardrobe selection. Her hair is not going to look great and she has no makeup. So uh, combining that with cartoons is what makes it really, really fun for me because I've simplified and added realism even in the realm within the character, within which the character lives. Um, that's why when we're looking at movies and the character who's all messed up has like curled, it looks like an iron, you know, three inch iron curled her hairs um, in movies, you know, and like 
let's say if you if you guys have watched that um that thing on HBO Max, uh, his dark materials, the character Lyra sometimes look like she's been traveling. She hasn't showered. She looks like shit, but her hair looks curled and perfectly clean. And that just that kind of stuff does not work for me. So that's why I'm saying you know original characters are so over groomed, um, and that's what makes them unappealing to me. So before. After basic fundamentals, help your hybrid anime. That's the lesson of today. Write that back to me. Basic fundamentals, help your hybrid anime drawing. Um, <laughs> original character, do not steal. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, so before, after, the character looks a lot more mature, a lot more mysterious, because you actually use the thing that's used in cinema to create a mysterious character, which is shadows. Um, shadows are used to add mystery. And they've kind of really, like, that background value is um, uh, ill-advised because I would say it, it's not really adding to the mystery at all. The background value, did I say background character? Background value. Um, I would just darken it to something a little bit more gray or dark. Fixing, obviously, the white in the hair right now. Um, and then when you deliver the character in a stage of some kind, always go for the... <coughs> the um, where are you? Uh, where is it? Gradient tool. That kind of signature anime half shadow at the top also helps you stage a mysterious character. Also has to do with realism. So before, after. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you everyone for coming. I know we talked about pretty crazy shit on our first day back. Um, but it's been, uh, it's been too long since I've done a critique hour. It feels like I haven't done a critique hour in six months, even though it's been like 19, 20 days. Um, I do not know how to go on vacation. I'm a workaholic and I love my job. And that's the beauty about having, you know, doing the job you love is that it's, when you go on vacation, it's like, what am I doing? Um, but anyway, any questions at all before I get going? Fundamentals means a healthier, healthier, happier hybrid. Thank you, Nala. Well put. <coughs> You're welcome, Assam. Um, so, uh, closing announcements. Portrait Studio is still on sale for anyone interested. So are my brushes. The Portrait Studio will be on sale for another maybe two weeks. Um, and then after that, it'll go back to the half, the previous sale price, which is 69 or 70 or 65 I forget. Um, all the brushes are also on sale. <clears throat> the community um, to join the community to submit your work for critique hour so that we could beat it up and <laughs> shred it in front of the in front of Benny Adam um, is uh, to, you want to just go to the reddit you click on the little reddit icon right here um, and that's where you'll go make sure you join read the read the announcements at the top the, the community design challenge is currently posted the ancient weapon design Please watch it, um, the, the, the previous one from a couple years ago. It's so cool, it's so much fun, we had so much fun, and it's a contest. So if you want to win private sessions with me where we work on your portfolio, I assign you continuous, we continue this topic, we continue character design and help you develop some portfolio pieces, that's the reward, a couple of, a couple, maybe three or four uh, critique hour sessions with me. It just depends on my curriculum and how much I can offer. Um, um, but, uh, but that's part of the, part of the uh, rewards. You win brushes, you win a copy of Porsche Studio and possibly an art pack, meaning I just send you a little package, um, of, of stuff that you can do to, you know, sketching, sketch pencils, my selection of traditional sketch stuff. But I'm not sure if, if that's what I'm going to be giving the, some of that is what I'm going to be giving the, the poll winner and some of the judge winner, which is me. All right. Such cool, such cool submissions from a couple of years ago. I'm hoping to draw the same kind of submissions this time around. Google Plus went down and the community was changed forever. Unfortunately, Google Plus was such an amazing um, you, uh, tool for us because there was it featured pictures, there were polls that we could run, announcements, stuff I could pick, uh, pin at the top, and it was a lot easier for everyone to use. Um, but uh, I hope you guys have fun with this uh, assignment. 
And uh, if you want to join as a patron, I am currently sending out a, a world building assignment for my apprentices. So if you want to join as an apprentice, uh, click here to support me on Patreon and I will send you a link into our private discord where you can start on your homework for this month. And the, the critique for the for the holiday for the holiday break homework, the advanced form studies will be done soon. So if you want to catch that, join as an apprentice as well. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Bye guys and uh, happy new year.